here today. We feel that we represent the voice of the people. My name is Nakima Levy Pounds. I am a civil rights attorney and the president of the Minneapolis NAACP. The sad part about what we heard today is that none of it surprises us. What we have realized through this system is that we cannot get justice, even when one of us is shot in the head in cold blood in front of dozens of witnesses. much different than ones that we've seen around the country. Starting with Trayvon Martin, who was killed by a vigilante, to Mike Brown, to Eric Garner, to 12-year-old Tamir Rice. And in many of those instances, the laws are used to justify the misconduct and abuse, and sometimes even the murder, of unarmed civilians at the hands of law enforcement, those who are supposed to protect and serve. We are standing here today declaring that enough is enough. We are tired of what's been happening within the system. We are tired of the voices of African Americans and other people of color being silenced within this system. The way in which the U.S. Attorney articulated the issues was, from the officer's perspective, just as we saw with Mike Freeman.
who was assaulted by the Minneapolis Police Department and ultimately murdered. These officers are highly trained, highly skilled, have all sorts of non the weapons that they can use and other forms of tactical takedown that they can use in subduing a, a potential perpetrator or suspect. But in this instance, all we've seen was, was a narrative that continues to reinforce the old narrative that has been over the centuries where black and brown bodies and, and, and people of color, we just don't matter. We don't count in this community. We don't count in this world. And as far as this, this system is, but we're not going to continue to allow that to be so to be that at the narrative that we believe we are people that are going to continue to fight and stand up. We're not only calling upon those of living and conscious and, and have savages who are coming up faithfully across religious divides and lines to come out and stand in solidarity with us because it's going to take all of us. It's going to take the power of holy. It's going to take the power of God. It's going to take the power of our ancestors to overturn this system. We need to come in and align with principles and morals that we really believe are true and, and are evident in our lives. And so we're going to continue to stand and fight. We appreciate you all coming out. Next, we're going to hear from Raisha Williams, who is running for the 5th Ward City Council seat, which is the ward in which Jamar Clark was killed. Right. Raisha Williams. R-A-E-I-S-H-A. -A. I'm a city council candidate for the 5th Ward of Minneapolis. Today, we heard them speak about having a meeting with community members later on this afternoon. I asked what community members, because the community members that were there the first day that this happened to Jamar are standing behind you. The Minneapolis NAACP was the first group on the scene. And then Black Lives Minneapolis came. Those are the two groups of black liberation that moved forward in demanding justice for Jamar. Those are the groups that we're talking about community members who stood up and said enough is enough. So what groups are you bringing to the table? People that you're in their pockets? We are no longer going to accept any group, whether they're community members or they're community organizations. They cannot stand on the wrong side. You have to do the right thing. We are chasing everybody out of the community who is not for the community. Whether you're elected officials, whether you're an organization that's come to Poverty Pin Park community, we're done with it. And we're no longer going to accept this. Song. We're calling everybody out today. Either stand on the right side or move out the way. Because the day is come, the day has come, that we're no, gonna, no longer going to let business as usual to happen. Today is the day that we demand justice. And if we don't get it inside, we're going to take it to the streets and demand it again. We are the people and we will not stop. They did this to us many years ago. They lynched us. And here we have a system lynching our men and women and children yet again. And nobody is being accounted for. We stand here saying that slavery is not over because it isn't. You have proven it again today and you continue to prove it time and time. Today we're saying that we are not going to be bought because we are unbossed and unbought and Shirley Chisholm and all of our ancestors who came before us are standing, us, standing with us here today and we're saying we're demanding it and we're going to take it. Right. Yes, Next, we will hear from Nathaniel Khalid, who is the past president of the St. Paul NAACP and a community activist. You know, uh, as I go on into the sunset of my years, I've been out here battling a long time for justice. And uh, through that process, we have met with every government official from state to federal to sit down and uh, talk about our issues. And one of the main themes have always been dialogue. And uh, we were involved in that dialogue because we were seeking positive results in accomplishing justice. We were able to establish a civilian review board. We thought that would take care of the problems. And, and, and of course, that didn't. We uh, had training and more training, and we had the community involved in training officers, and that didn't take care of the problem. And so here we are in 2016, and I just thank Almighty God for all these young folks. Yes, yes. Because I'm a tired old man, right. yes, son. And there's only a few things that I can do. And that is to pray and to take things to another level, but I'm going to keep on praying. But these young people, I thank God for them yes, for taking yes. the mantle and not just knocking on the door and seeking justice, but kicking the door down. That's right. You know, I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. That's right. That's right. Dealing with this stuff we've been dealing with for years. And one of the most compelling things about this incident, without even talking to any witnesses, was to look at the video and watch 
how the officers initiated the action that ended up in this young man's life. They could have put him in a bear hug. These are two pretty good sized guys. And to throw him on the ground and to end up where you're tussling with him over your weapon, it's just unacceptable. I'm a retired St. Paul firefighter, and we've had numerous incidents over my years of service where we dealt with folks that was unruly, uncooperative, they were strung out on drugs, some of them had things in their hands, but not once, not once did we not only not hit them, but we subdued them. We didn't brutalize them, and this was a form of street justice. And so I would just hope and pray that these young folks don't give up. Yes, yes. Keep on battling and keep on fighting the fight. And I would ask our people to not allow Andy Luger and others to divide yes. this community. Yes. Right. Listen, yes. listen, like they have the Somalian community. Yes. All right, you can come up with all the resources in the world to track down folks, arrest them, and to yes. charge them yes. for what you think they might do. That's right. But here you have a clear case of homicide. Yes. At the very least, manslaughter. Yes. That's right. And you're telling us you can't do anything. Mm -hmm. That's just totally unacceptable. Mm -hmm. And lastly, I've watched over the years that many brothers in our community have gone through the criminal justice system right. with a fraction of the evidence. That's right. That's right. That they're claiming that they can't take the court, but they were able to convict these brothers with an all-white jury right. here in uh, progressive Minnesota. Huh. That's right. So I just hope and pray that you young brothers and sisters keep on fighting a good right. fight yes. And, yes. and do not allow them to escape justice. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Nathaniel, Nathaniel Kalik, K-H-A-L-I-Q is the last name. Um, next, we're going to call up Ms. Rosemary Nevels who is a community leader and a former Black Panther. You know, uh, I can't hear you. yes, it's progressive Minnesota, but I say we're up Mississippi. Listen, mm -hmm. you might as well be in Mississippi the way people are treated here, people of color and poor people. And I say, like, why are we allowing somebody like Donald Trump to run around the country and create this hate and fear and divisiveness among American people who have fought so long for social justice and human rights to defy us again. Why are there no programs hardly in North Minneapolis? Hundreds of children will be cut out of the summer programming because funds are being cut. Yet we want to give the police department more money to police the community. Mm. Why in Minnesota do we have solitary confinement for children in juvenile justice system? One of the very few states left in this country that even allows that. Why is all this chaos? Why? Why are all the drugs in our community? We can't bring the drugs to our community. We get stopped coming in. Listen. More and more drugs. The heroin is being dropped again in the community. Why? When we did that occupation, that community was so peaceful, you didn't hear anything at night. Once the occupation was over, all we hear is sirens again. Right. Why? Why are our schools being closed? Our swimming pools in the community being closed for our families and our children being shipped out of our communities so the suburban schools can stay open because they don't have the population we have with children. Mm. Why? Why are our children being killed? Why do mothers have to continue to bury their young children? and not only their sons, their daughters. Why? I just say, why? Why are righteous people not speaking out? Mm. It is time, because if they come for me, they're gonna come for you. Mm. Listen. Believe that, even if you're white, they're coming for you. If you're not part of the one percent in this country. That's right. So we better all unite, Native Americans, Hispanics, Europeans, and yes, the Somali brothers better get clear mm -hmm. and stop letting these demons separate their community because they'll be worse off. Their children are being incarcerated at alarming rates as well. I just say, why? Why are we allowing this? Why? Where are the good citizens of this whole country? The world is looking at us. 
they are so angry about Donald Trump. Can you imagine him becoming a leader, mm. running this country, what this world will be like? Why are we allowing this? Thank you. Rosemary, could you spell your last name? Neville, N E V I L S. Again? N E V I L S. Thank you. Next, we're going to hear from Megan McCoughlin, who is a Lutheran pastor. I am Megan McLaughlin, a pastor in the Evangelical Lutheran Church of America. And as a white ally, I know that I grew up in a situation where uh, I never had to face what my friends behind me have talked about. I've never had to wonder if I would be safe walking down the street. I never had to worry if I was stopped by a police officer that perhaps I might not be treated well and treated justly. I know the privilege that I have today and I could make the choice to just continue to live in that privilege and not stand here. My faith calls me to be here. Mm. What is happening today in our world has been happening for far too long. Mm. We need to stand together as a people together and recognize that we cannot live separate lives. We have to live as one people together, recognizing the diversity and the many gifts and talents of every person and celebrating our differences, not looking at differences as something to be frightened of and something to cast away from ourselves. That requires all of us to change. That requires all of us to take risks. We have to do that for our safety, for the safety of everybody in this community and in particular for the safety of those who have been far too long cast to the margins of our society. Today is the day to do that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So as we conclude this press conference, I want to say a few words to wrap us up and then we'll take any questions. Just want to reiterate the fact that we feel that Jamar Clark's human rights were violated in 61 seconds of his encounter with officers from the Minneapolis Police Department. Officers who have a violent past that has been glossed over and ignored by the media. One officer in particular who violently took down Jamar Clark aggressively in a manner that was unacceptable that ultimately led to his death. There is a problem with policing in the city of Minneapolis and in the state of Minnesota. We can no longer live in an environment in which officers are allowed to kill with impunity. As a matter of conscience, we must rise up and demand justice. As Frederick Douglass once said, power concedes nothing without a demand. It never has and it never will. So we are calling on all activists to remain vigilant in the fight for justice. We're calling on our young people to come to the front lines in the fight for justice. We're calling on the faith community to stop being religious and to put their faith in action on the front lines for justice. We must pick up the ashes from the civil rights movement and put phase two into full force and effect. Dr. King lost his life fighting for justice and equality under the law. And when he started arguing for economic justice, that's when he really became dangerous. That work has been left unfinished. The fact that we have never received e economic justice, never received reparations for what our ancestors yes, went through, yes. led them for free in this country, to have the Emancipation Proclamation put into effect, which was supposed to abolish slavery, then having the 13th Amendment, which was supposed to abolish slavery, opening the door to a new form of slavery okay. through the criminal yes. justice system. Right. A system in which now we have 2.3 million people currently incarcerated, a million of them African American. Yes. This song? Completely unacceptable. We have to understand that policing in this country and the criminal justice system are tied hand in hand. Yes. We have to understand that the fact that we didn't get economic justice means that our people are relegated to the margins of society. Yes. In communities in which white officers come in and patrol them and round them up and bring them into a system in which they face further oppression. Yes. And it is completely unacceptable. We are tired of this. Enough is enough. It is time to rise up and demand yes. justice. The yes. fight will continue. Yes. Now we'll take any questions. You know, we've been hearing a lot about why don't these black folks come out and march and demonstrate and demand justice 
when a black person is brutalized. Come on. We've been fighting for justice. Hello. Listen. For black folks that have been brutalized for the last 30 or 40 years. Look. There was a time when we had unequal protection under the law. That's right. So I don't want anyone to get it twisted or confused. Ugh. We've been out there battling on both sides. That's right. But many yeah. times it's the media that don't respond when it's one of us. That's but right. We've been out there and we got a history and a record of showing that we've been out there. And for some of our people that have been critical of Black Lives Matter not being out there dealing with uh, the so-called black on black We've had peace marches for years, That's right. and young folks have been part of that. So we don't want to respond to that question. Anymore. Listen, that's right. No. And as a matter of fact, it's because of a lack of economic justice that we have violence in the community. We have people who are engaging in gangs and gang activity and criminal activity because they have no hope for their future. We saw Minneapolis Mayor Betsy Hodges and Blong Yang try to advocate for $605,000 to go towards the 4th Precinct, yes. which has a history of yes. violence against the yes. African American community, oh, but they yeah. can't create jobs yes. for some of the young people involved in gangs. Yes. It's absolutely unacceptable. So no, we don't want to hear about so-called black-on-black crime, because when white people commit crime, it's just crime. That's right. Yeah. So yeah. stop acting like it is part of a pathology in our community. It is not. If people had jobs and hope and something to live for, they would be less likely to engage in dangerous activity yes. that will lead to the loss of their lives or the loss of others. That's so we right. need to reframe the narrative. That's right. And we need the media to wake up yes. and help right. reframe the narrative. Yes. That's right. Instead of constantly reinforcing the message that we're just killing each other for fun or because we enjoy it. That is absolutely not true. Yeah. The murders that happen in our community are a symptom of a lack of economic yeah. justice and racism yeah. and a loss of hope. So we will be working to restore that hope. We will be working to unseat political leaders who do not deserve to remain in office. Well, yes. The time is now for justice in our community and across this nation.